What's going on, guys? So, the Fire Emblem Direct that happened like a day or two ago. My overall thoughts on it. This is going to be a short video because there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. But what is there to talk about is awesome. Um, so, yeah, let's get right to it. First off, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. Um, it's basically a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, which is a game we never got here in the U.S. or outside of Japan in general. So it looks amazing. They really brought it up to the modern, the modern standards. It uses the Awakening and Fates engine. It's exclusive to 3DS. It is coming out retail and digitally May 19th. So it's right around the corner, really. You know, right this spring, um, two months after the uh, Switch launches. So it's exclusive for 3DS. Like I said, it uses the Awakening and the Fates engine. Um, it has full voice acting, English dubbed. You know, everything. Um, and yeah, there's gonna be two amiibos coming out with it. Which are the uh, two main characters of the game? Let me see. What was their names again? Uh, Alm and uh, Alm and Celicia. Uh, they'll be available as amiibo figures in a two-pack, and that same day, May 19th. That's awesome. I cannot wait. The game looks really good. It really Fire Emblem Gaiden goes against the traditional standards of Fire Emblem. Uh, you have a lot of dungeon crawling and other aspects that weren't really in other games. Um, but yeah, it's really great that we're getting this game out here now, finally after all these years, in a better version, a remake. Um, something I noticed, if you look at the title, Fire Emblem Echoes is like the main title, and then Shadows of Valencia is like a subtitle. Kind of like Fire Emblem Fates. Fire Emblem Fates was a main title, and then you had subtitles like Birthright, Conquest, Revelation. I'm wondering if this means that Fire Emblem Echoes is going to be a new line of remakes. Something I've been thinking about because there's actually quite a few Fire, Fire Emblem games that we still don't have here yet. You know, um, Thracia 776, um, Genealogy of the Holy War, um, The Binding Blade, which is the first game advanced one with Roy that we never got here. We got the prequel game with, with Ellie Wood, which is Roy's father, but we never got the one with Roy. And I'd really like to play the one with Roy. So there's quite a few... Um, at least three or four different games that we haven't gotten and I'm wondering if they're gonna be doing an Echoes sort of series that's gonna be like remakes you know of of older games that we never got because that'd be really really cool it'd be a great way to finally get these games worldwide in a more modern version not like the dated Famicom you know um, versions so that would be really really cool if they did that but I'm excited I'm getting that day one getting those Amiibos day one of course you guys know me I gotta get all the Amiibos um, yeah, uh, they also talked about Fire Emblem Warriors. They didn't really talk too much about it. We just know it's coming out in the fall, and they showed a little bit of gameplay, which looks really cool. But the one really, the thing I thought was really kind of a bad decision was it's no longer a Switch exclusive. Well, I mean, it was never a Switch exclusive, but that's what they announced it as like a week or so ago at the event, at the Switch event. Um, but now, during the Direct, they announced it is also coming to new 3DS and new 3DS XL. Which, at least, it's better than Hyrule Warriors Legends, where they made it for the regular 3DS as well, and the game suffered for it. At least they're making it exclusively for the new 3DS when it comes to the 3DS hardware, because it's a better version of the hardware anyways. Um, you know, I, if people who, people who haven't upgraded yet, I mean, you should have upgraded a long time ago. I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know. Um, it, the it's better tech, <laughs> but um, still, I feel like this should have been a Switch exclusive. It's just, I don't know, I, I I don't understand. You have a new system coming out. You need as many exclusives as, as possible to get people on board. Fire Emblem Warriors, that's a big title that will capture a lot of the Japanese RPG uh, and Warriors fans and Koei Tecmo fans and just there's, there's a huge fan base for those kind of games. Make an exclusive for the Switch gives though gives that fan base another reason to jump on board with your new system. Make it available for a system that you've have had out for six years now. Um, well, like more like two or three years, I should say, because of the new 3DS. But still, making it available on that is just going to cut into less profit for the Switch. So I feel like it should have been Switch exclusive. Plus, being Switch exclusive means it wouldn't have been held back by any of the new 3DS limitations. Because even though the new 3DS is better than the regular 3DS, there are still limitations with it, especially when compared to systems like the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. So I just feel like it should have remained a Switch exclusive. And the game's already portable anyways because of the portability nature of the Switch. You can have it um, 
you know, on your TV or on the go. So there was really no true need for a 3DS version. So I feel like that was kind of a... I don't like that decision. Me personally, I'm going to get Fire Emblem Warriors Day 1 on the Switch. I'm not getting the new 3DS version. Um, the only way I'll get the new 3DS version is if there's like some exclusive content beyond like cops or something like like if there's a whole if there's like separate campaigns or something um like i wasn't gonna buy high rewarders legends um until they announced all the new content and um like all the, the, and that was um there was a lot of new content with high rewarders legends compared to the original so if they do that for the new 3ds where you know switch version has some exclusive content 3DS version has some exclusive content, and they're both substantial. They're not just like costumes or like an extra character. They're, they're actually substantial content differences. Then I'll pick up both. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm looking primarily at the Switch version, so that's just me. Um, they did confirm a brand new Fire Emblem game is coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2018. They didn't show any gameplay for it, not even a logo. They just said Fire Emblem for Switch 2018. Um, all we know is that it's in development, and it's the first home console one since Radiant Dawn on the Wii, which was like 10 years ago. So, I can't say I'm going to get this one day one, because if it's more like traditional Fire Emblem, meaning pre-Awakening and Fates era, then I'll definitely be on board day one. Um, if, it's, if it's more like Fates, with the whole overly anime, dating sim, waifu you know, ridden with DLC and all the other stuff, like, then I really, I don't like that direction for Fire Emblem. Um, I like some of the advancements, some of the gameplay advancements, and I love the uh, casual mode, having the choice of not having permadeath there. I like having that, but as far as the style of the overall series, I prefer it before Awakening, especially before Fates. Awakening, I don't mind as much, um, but Fates, I do not like Fates, so... If there's any Fire Emblem games that are like Fates, I kind of, I, I want to avoid them. <laughs> so if the new game for Switch is like, more like Awakening and Fates, I may be steering clear of it, because that's not my preferred style. If it's more like the era before, then I'll be on board, definitely, day one. You can guarantee me there. Um, the last thing I talked about, which we knew was going to be the bulk of this Direct, and that's Fire Emblem Heroes, which is the mobile game that we know was coming out. And it's coming out pretty soon here, February 2nd, for both Android and iPhone. No more exclusive exclusivity bullshit, which is great. Um, but it's going to be free to play, and it looks really, really good. I mean, it looks like an actual game, which is more than could be said for Pokemon Go. And it looks like something actual, unique, and fitting for the series. Um, unlike Mario Run, which was just, you know, Mario copy-pasted onto an endless runner. Um... So, it looks really, really cool. Um, it's, it's free, it's, it is free to play, and there, there are microtransactions, but it doesn't look like it's going to rely heavily on those. You're basically going to be able to recruit tons of the Fire Emblem characters from overall over the series, plus some new ones, and you're gonna, there's going to be several different modes. Um, you'd be, and it's like mini versions of the maps, pretty much. Some of the maps they already shown are, are um, inspired by some maps from previous games. So it looks really cool. It's going to fit the, the touch screen of mobile devices really, really well. Um, and like I said, it comes out February 2nd. You can actually choose for the first in-game event which um, Fire Emblem characters, which hero and heroine you want featured in the game. You can vote for that. There's an actual website you can vote for that. And if you vote for that, you get a platinum bonus with My Nintendo. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm probably going to choose Roy. And I don't know who else. But I really want to see Roy. <laughs> I like Roy a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, it's really crazy to think about. Like, <laughs> you think, like, especially like during the late Wii and DS era, like Fire Emblem was kind of like almost non-existent. Like it was dying off when you really think about it. And then now with Awakening and Fates, it kind of brought it back. Um, which is both good and bad, you know. Because again, it's great that the series has been very popularized because it's it, it needed more more support needed more recognition otherwise it was going to end nintendo themselves said that but at the same time i hope they don't draw inspiration from awakening and fates so much i hope they draw inspiration from the series as a whole because like i said there was elements of those games i'm not the biggest fan of um that's one thing i am worried about 
Fire Emblem Warriors is the fact that I hope that the cast isn't primarily geared towards those two games. Like, I want to see from the entire series. So, anyways, I really like this Direct. It wasn't long. It was like 20 minutes or something. Um, yeah, really, really good Direct. Really good to show off some future titles. I was hoping we'd see more in Fire Emblem Warriors, but, you know, we'll probably see it at E3. It's probably going to be an E3 game, definitely. Um, the 3DS version is, again, I don't care. For, I think I don't care for that decision. I think that was kind of dumb on their part. They really needed that title for the Switch. So, but hey, you can't uh, you can't win them all. Um, and at least new 3DS owners who want to play it on that platform will be able to. So, I mean, in, in the end, there's some good of it. So, um, again, still holding out reservations for the Switch Fire Emblem. We got to see what kind of style it is first. I'm hoping it's more like uh, Path of Radiance. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it. I have nothing else to talk about when it comes to the Fire Emblem Direct. So let me know what you guys think of it. And um, as always, I'll catch you later.